I'm Frank Lonergan, your mayor of Woodburn. And today I'm gonna to be presenting our State of the City Address to everyone out here that's listening. This was actually gonna be uh, given a month ago, but uh, we had to cancel it due to some inclement weather, some ice and, and snow that we had problems with. That's probably not a bad thing because our city actually, it was doing good a month ago, but doing we're doing really good now. So uh, without further ado, having been sworn in as mayor just four short months ago, I can report to you that the state of the city is strong and a future is optimistic as we're experiencing unprecedented investment in housing, infrastructure, and job creation. The leadership on the city council is also strong. And with the recent addition of an experienced city councilor in Eric Morris and the return of Councilor Carney as council president, we're focused on building a more economically sustainable community, preserving our quality of life and the unique cultural assets that make Woodburn, Woodburn. I'm fortunate to be serving with the city council that has many years of experience serving Woodburn. We are an example of an elected board that despite the many challenges and different opinions, works together to get the big things done for our community. Councilors Cabrales, Swanson, Job, Cornwell, Carney, and Morris are great examples of community volunteers and public servants that make our community a better place. Woodburn is a generous and giving community of volunteers. Woodburn's Budget Committee, Arts and Murals Committee, Planning Commission, Park Boards and Library Boards have been essential to our success, both in the past and in more recent times. And for all of you that have served or are continually serving for your efforts on behalf of the city, thank you for the service and making a difference. Regarding development, that's not to say that there are not some significant challenges ahead, both present and in the future, because there are. We have demonstrated that by working together and articulating a vision for our community, we can grapple with and overcome these obstacles. Woodburn's vision of an economically viable, independent community that celebrates and protects our cultural diversity and provides a quality of life for our residents is becoming a reality every day. Five years ago, when we, nego we, no <laughs> when we negotiated our current urban growth boundaries, we had about five buildable lots left in our inventory. At our current rate of growth, Woodburn's 20-year supply now of buildable land will be consumed in just eight years. To that end, consistent with our settlement agreement with Thousand Friends of Oregon, with Marion County, and with DLCD, I'm pleased to announce that the city has begun the process to expand our urban growth boundary again to ensure that Woodburn can continue to provide capital investment, jobs, and affordable housing well into the future. Last year, our city permitted more than 700 new dwelling units, including a variety of housing types, attached and detached, and a range of price options. Now there are some 3,500 new housing units that are being constructed or in the works for Woodburn here in the near future. Many of you may find this hard to believe. The state of Oregon has, for the first time since it's been tracked, removed the city from their list of severely rent burdened communities. This is a housing affordability measurement used by the state. Essentially, this means that our residents are now paying a smaller percentage of their income towards housing expenses than before. In 2021, Woodburn was the eighth fastest growing city in the state. In 2022, we issued 30% more permits for housing than we did in 2021. This fiscal year, the Planning Commission is expected to hold more land use hearings than in any previous recorded year. Just recently, the Planning Commission approved a new perspective element of 500,000 square foot e-commerce building. It's gonna go on the east side of I-5. Also, they approved a new Unitas Credit Union that's gonna be constructed and a Chick-fil-A restaurant that is also coming to town. Currently existing businesses are expanding, such as La Marenta, which is a tortilla factory downtown on 2nd Street, it's going to be moving up to the high highway. Towns and Farms on Young Street is looking at doing an expansion. And Do It Best is looking at a 188,000 square foot expansion that is currently under construction. It's going to bring about an additional 20 jobs. The City Council does evaluate these projects. 
and their impacts to our community. In fact, the City Council denied an application for a new service station at Food Mart at the corner of Oregon Way and Highway 214 due to traffic safety concerns and closeness to some residences. <clears throat> the Council did not deny this due to 30 or 40 neighbors that did not want noise issues in the neighborhood. They denied it due to the same 30 or 40 neighbors that spoke, up, spoke about unsafe traffic concerns that would add to congestion on Highway 214. This shows the importance of our citizens speaking up for the right causes and issues. This applicant appealed that decision, which was successfully defended by our city at, with Luba. Our city council has been committed in ensuring that the new growth is paying its own way. Projects approved last year are currently in process, are modifying our transportation system development charges to address traffic impacts, which have increased, completing a new transit master plan, completing a park and recreation master plan, updating our wastewater facilities plan, developing a stormwater master plan, completing an urban growth expansion to add to our employment base along I-5, completing a TSP refinement plan specific to the high growth in the Southwest area. You can see there's a lot of planning going on. However, this is how good cities operate to grow and improve. They put a plan together to determine the need, cost and time frame. Then it's the city council's job to see that the good plans are followed through within budgeted goals. Also, we're acquiring from Marion County, the Par Butteville intersection to address ongoing safety issues. We're overseeing privately funded street projects, such as Butteville Road, the highway with one with Highway 219 roundabout and an evergreen road expansion, both which will increase vehicle capacity. Also, we'll be increasing our planning department fees for development, development applications, which will be the first increase in 15 years. <clears throat> and some good news regarding our community center. The city's long planned community center project is moving forward with a general obligation bond scheduled for the November 2024 election. As the city resumes its final design work on the community center, I'm pleased to announce that Woodburn has settled our lawsuit against the state of Oregon. Our agreement restores Woodburn's 15 million grant for the community center, along with up to $2 million in low interest loans to keep this work moving forward. Seeing the community center to fruition will likely be the biggest project undertaken by our city and will be the property of our city council. I'll be reaching out to our community to begin the work of moving our project along from design to the passage of this general obligation bond. Although I did not want to file this lawsuit, I'm very appreciative of the goodwill efforts of Governor Kotek's office in seeing that the dispute was resolved in everybody's interest. I also want to publicly thank Senator Kim Thatcher and Representative Tracy Kramer for their significant advocacy for Woodburn and their help in resolving the lawsuit in the best interest of our community. Last year, Woodburn's Police Department responded to approximately 13,816 calls for service. Out of the total calls for service, 836 arrests were made. Of those 836 arrests, only 38 involved the use of force. This is a one in 22% ratio, which is outstanding. As we've been able to add police officers to our staff, the police department was able to restart the school resource officer program with the Woodburn School District. In addition, the Woodburn Police Department added one traffic unit back to the traffic team. It will be adding a second traffic officer here anytime soon. The city also created a new community response officer position. This position was created to work closely with local residents, business leaders, and neighborhoods on chronic public safety issues. As business leaders know that you can call upon our community response office to assist in any number of issues that you might be facing from vandalism to theft. So moving on to economic development, as many of you know, Woodburn's economic development department, which was created when I served on the city council, as a priority need for Woodburn, has been very successful. Our economic efforts transcend numerous departments and projects. The primary focus of the Economic Development Department this past year has resulted in the Do It Best expansion at their Woodburn location and helping us land the 3.8 million square foot Amazon project operation. Economic Development also completed projects 
such as the Water Tower Makeover, the Pex and Delilah Park murals, the Plaza Fountain Improvements, and the Bungalow Theater Woodburn Muse Museum Restoration. We completed the locomotive shelter in the newly renamed Frank Shear Locomotive Park. Frank was a very de dedicated volunteer here in Woodburn for over 40 years when he worked on the engine 1785. Unfortunately, Frank passed away this last fall. However, I want to recognize and thank our past mayor, Kathy Figley, for maintaining a relationship with Frank and his family over the years and helping to recognize him with the dedication of the locomotive park. Woodburn's long-term partnership with the Chamber of Commerce has been crucial to our efforts to attract business, promote tourism, and build our workforce. The city successfully launched the North Marion Tourism Collaborative with Woodburn taking the lead, partnering with nine communities to promote tourism opportunities in the region, utilizing a mobile kiosk and Explore North Marion website. And I cannot say enough about the leadership of Chamber Executive Director John Zorbers and the ongoing work of the Chamber of Commerce's Board of Directors. We cannot grow and be a great city without this partnership. Our Family Resource Center. With our growing community, the City to Council is dedicated to ensuring the needed social services programming, which our community has been underrepresented in and overlooked for many years, that is now available. These are the types of programs the City cannot directly provide and requires a partnership with service organizations. As a result, this past year, we have filled the, partner, filled the Family Resource Center with a new partnership that provides child advocacy, an abuse assessment, domestic violence, counseling, homelessness, senior and migrant worker assistance, trafficking, and mental health, mental health support, along with other services. With Legion Park, the Legion Park project has long been a priority. And now I'm pleased to report that the Legion Park improvement is substantially completed with a world-class soccer turf, with six pickleball courts, with grandstands and added recreational areas. This project would not have been possible without a generous $1 million Amazon donation, without park system development charges, and funding from the American Plan Act. We're now able to host first-class soccer tournaments. And I'm pleased to announce that we now have a new bookmobile that will soon be delivering library services throughout our community. This will help all those who cannot make it to the library. With regards to our city finances, for many years, the city has skillfully and conservatively managed our resources, allowing the city to weather the downtimes and build during the good times. Woodburn's financial management has allowed our community to fare better than others during recessions and the pandemic. During the pandemic, the city's relentless advocacy was able to bring about $10 million in new programs and services to the community. In terms of our city's overall financial position, our city has accumulated a significant increase in dedicated funding for future parks, for streets, and water and sewer projects. The city's general fund, which provides many of the services and programs important to most people, remains steady. But I'm told the city, that caution is needed as the city has been hit hard with inflationary pressure and the overall cost increase associated with normal businesses. Although the general fund is stable, I'm proposing the city undertake a strategic financial plan within the next year to more actively project revenues and costs in upcoming years making recommendations to ensure current levels of services services can be sustained in the face of all growth. And along that, our finance director has recently came to our last city council meeting, recommending that we buy down some debt. Spending $2 million to buy back an obligation bond will save us close to $50,000 in interest payments. These are the type of projects and programs and financial ideas that certainly, certainly benefit our city. However, we do still have some challenges. The biggest economic threat to the community is the pending EPA mandate for environmental improvements or cooling the effluent discharged into the Pudding River. This unfunded mandate could easily cost Woodburn residents in excess of $300 million, making it economically unviable for our community. 
I recently brought this to the matter and to the attention of Representative Salinas, who promised she would look into it and see what she could do to help us. Our city needs to continue our efforts to bring ODOT improvements on both their highway systems and right of way that directly impact our community. It's estimated that 60 to 70% of the traffic in Woodburn originates outside our community. And as I mentioned earlier, the city is currently working towards constructing our long planned community center project, which will likely be the largest undertaking by our city in memory. The financing of this project will require the passage of general obligation bond, along with additional grants and donations, and will truly require the work and support of the entire community. Our goal is to have this general obligation bond on the ballot in November of 2024. Generally speaking, biggest concerns are traffic congestion and housing affordability. We're also watching legislature this year and are particularly concerned about mandates regarding housing, infrastructure spending, and parking requirements. Last year, the city completed a significant rewrite of the WDO to address Ms. middle housing mandate. As you can see, Woodburn is in a very good place. We are a desired community to move to, desired community to live in, a desired community to work in, and as a desired community to play in. And I thank you all for helping to make this city an awesome growing community. Thank you.